is Patrick Day of Haunted Hooks, and you are listening to Mysteries and Unexplained. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Rusty O'Neill, and we've got my uh, lovely co-host, Beth Brown, and we're joined today by Matthew Sandman Kelly and William Brower, who are planning a expedition or a project to go over to the site of the Titanic sinking to collect EVPs. It was a very interesting topic. Now, you're going to be spending six days there, are you? Yes, we plan to uh, spend six days over the site. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, not uh, the entire time won't be spent on paranormal research. You know, like I said, we will be releasing 1,533 white roses uh, into the water, you know, um, you know, respect is of paramount, paramount importance to us. But uh, in addition to that, um, as long as uh, we can push this through with our funding, uh, we're going to be taking a side scan center image of the Titanic herself, because as you know, the Titanic is degrading at a very rapid rate right now. She's disintegrating at the rate of 240 pounds per day uh, due to uh, rust bacteria colonies. And, uh, I, well, I mean, do the math, 48,000 tons disappearing at 240 pounds per day. Um, uh, she hasn't been imaged for a number of years, so you know we hope to uh, bring back a uh, side scan center image of exactly what her current condition is. And of course, anyone that's familiar uh, with what one of these images looks like, it's incredible. Even for a vessel down as deep as the Titanic, it comes out looking like a black and white Polaroid. So you know that will be uh, that will be our contribution to the uh, maritime community at large. Mm. When when is now, the sorry when is the expedition oh. to happen? Well, uh, as long as we can close the funding in time, uh, we're hoping to be out there on their 99th anniversary. Uh, if we if we uh, if we miss that due to funding negotiations, uh, then we're probably going to go out there in July. We don't want to go out there on a centennial because it's going to be a circus. And, uh, you know, we kind of like to have the waters to ourselves while we're out there because this is very delicate research. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, silence is, uh, silence is golden in uh, that reference. Mm-hmm. No, it would be if you're trying to collect EVPs. Is it a place that a lot of people seem to head out to? Well, uh, no, not generally. But uh, I believe on the centennial, the 100th anniversary of the thinking, uh, I think there's going to be a number of vessels out there for various reasons. Right. And we really don't want to be out there. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a traffic jam. We uh, we don't want to be out there uh, during that. However, like I said, if we don't close the funding in time and we miss our July window, then we will be out there on the centennial. But like I said, we want to be out there on the 99th. That's, uh, that's what we're shooting for. Right. Now... Uh, Go on, we. I was just going to say. I was just going to say. Actually, uh, in, in regards to uh, contributions and such, there's actually uh, one, one thing that we are extremely uh, very fortunate enough to have uh, that, that was just uh, given to us a few weeks ago. Um, there is a establishing artist who lives over in uh, Tunisia. Her name is uh, Ikram Yakubi, and uh, she actually had just created the uh, logo that we're using for the expedition itself, and. Uh, you know, she actually took it from a different approach, right, where most of the other expeditions uh, profile the ship itself. Uh, in her case, uh, she did it uh, in regards to show not only the people of Titanic, but also uh, her belief in uh, peace and uh, serenity. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Nice. Now, uh, if people wanted to uh, find out more information, where can they uh, where can they do it? Now, you've got a Facebook page. What's the address for that? That's uh, Facebook.com. Yeah, we, 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 have, we have a fan page on Facebook. Uh, if you look under the search engine for Titanic Endeavor. Mm-hmm. And we, yeah, we, we, up, we update that page uh, at least uh, almost once a week and also has uh, various uh, discussions and everything else on there. Uh, you know, they're open to the public, obviously, and such. I'd also like to mention... Uh, uh, we do also have a web page. I do not have the URL in front of me, but I will see to it that William go ahead, goes ahead and posts the link to our uh, website on the fan page. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to post your Facebook page um, into the chat room now. I'm also going to uh, paste your email address if that's all right. Yes, yes. Well, so, good. And you know, and and uh, by all means, we're both on uh, Facebook. If anyone wants to befriend us and help. To correspond that way, uh, I'm always under the belief the more the merrier. 
Um, so this is what happens when I have too many buttons. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to grab their Facebook page, too. It wasn't working out. For, oh, I have it now. That's all right. I've, I've beaten you to it. Now, uh, there's another. today is another landmark day, isn't it, Beth? It is. This one, uh, probably not for as many people as it is for us here in Richmond, Virginia. But today, January 24th, in 1935, the first canned beer was sold in the United States only one mile away from my house right here in Richmond, Virginia. So tip one back today in a can and remember Please don't it say it was in 1935. <laughs> I think I bought that first year. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. It wasn't Foster's. Please don't say it was Foster's. No, 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 it wasn't. Oh, that's good. There's only one beer at Coors Light. <laughs> you know, the well, reason... I'm in trouble for saying that on an Australian state. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we export Foster's is because no one drinks it back here. There, I mean, that's our way of getting oh. back at you lot. You know, well, so. no. <laughs> But, I, I'm in trouble. I have a refrigerator full. <laughs> I can't believe you drink that stuff. That is terrible. We went. Hey, he's helping out the Australian economy. <laughs> Just let it go. We, um, when I was in the last in the states, we went to a, a place called the Outback uh, Steakhouse, and uh, there was this guy in a plate full of barbecue prawns, and he had this huge export can of uh, Fosters. And as soon as he heard us talk, he came come over and, you know, he loved everything Australian. And when we told him that the only reason we exported fossils because it was cat's piss and no one drank it back home, he was quite disappointed. <laughs> I mean, you, you turn up to a party with a can of fossils and you'll be thrown out. You know, no one, no one really drinks it at all. But, uh, uh, Rocky, I think I'm going to have to take it upon myself to send you a case of Coors Light, brother. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take any beer except for fossils. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite interesting. The first can bit. Actually, I'll tell you a little story, and this is right away from um, anything about the Titanic or paranormal. We used to have steel cans in this country, and uh, when they uh, changed over to uh, aluminium cans, there was still, you know, half and half in a pub. And uh, we were sitting in a pub one day, and I had a friend of mine, Shorty, Shorty and. Um, he was getting these aluminium cans and then crushing them on his forehead after he'd finished drinking them. Of course, there was uh, some American Marines in at the time. And I see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd already teed up with the bartender. Of course, this Marine comes over and says, how do you do that? Because they've been drinking the, the, these, uh, these, these beers from steel cans. He says, it's, it's simple. You just smashed it on your forehead. So the Marine tried it. And we had to take him up to the hospital. <laughs> you, you know the best way to kill a marine, don't you? Oh, you throw sand uh, at a brick wall and ask him to hit the beach. <laughs> That's terrible. I shouldn't really say that because I was on exchange in, uh, over at um, 29 Palms and, in, and I was very impressed, but... Uh, we used to have jokes. We used to tell them things like, you know what Marine stands for? And they'd go, uh, no, uh, muscles are required. Uh, uh, muscles are required. Uh, no brains necessary. No intelligence necessary. And uh, then we'd get beaten up. Well, I know I was, I was raised by a Marine, and whenever I wanted to P.O. my father, I'd just call him a jarhead. <laughs> well, see, I'm a Navy brat myself, well, but... Yeah, I mean, you can do that or ask them to put it in the Navy. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've actually come to the end of the show, uh, which is a bit of a shame. And uh, it, it's been an absolute fantastic evening. But uh, hopefully we can get you guys back um, just prior to the expedition, if we can, so you can give us a bit of an update and uh, definitely get you back afterwards. Well, it sounds well, uh, wonderful, you know. Yes, uh, thanks for having us on. You know, this is uh, this has uh, been our first uh, exposure to Australian media, and uh, you know, as a coincidence, uh, we're going to be making an appearance on Australian uh, television here in the next week or so. so oh, excellent! Uh, we like Australia. We like <laughs> Australia very much. Any time you come over, look me up, mate. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, of course. Yeah. This is uh, <laughs> Mysterious and Unexplained with Beth Brown and Rusty O'Neill. So uh, don't go away because the show coming up next is uh, going to be fantastic. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free with gold. 
virgin soil. 